All right, we're gonna be watching Xylowick, who's been playing uh, Baptiste. This is on Rialto, and the rank is Bronze Two to Silver Three. I'm gonna assume you are Bronze Two. Uh, do I deserve Silver? Oh, I guess maybe you're Silver Five. Let's just say it's Silver Five since it's Silver. I played Overwatch Two since launch. And at the beginning, as expected, I was very bad. I got landed on Silver 2, and I've always hovered around Silver 1 and Bronze. That's a large range. I Just, just FYI, the, the next level next to Silver 1 is Silver 2 and Gold 5 on the other side. So I don't know if you're actually oscillating between five ranks, but that's actually a lot of ranks to be moving up and down with. I eventually grew a lot better in all my roles. I usually have a steamroll of a game and have rarely been complained about despite the toxicity of these ranks. I would not use how often people complain about you as an assessment of whether or not you're good at the game or not. Or bad at the game. I, I would just ignore that at all completely. Also, I've stacked with plat people when I was in silver and never seemed overwhelmed or out of place in their lobbies. Even when Mr. Hero's comp was available, I hit plat 1 and eventually peaked Diamond 5. I don't know if Mr. Hero rank counts, and so that's what this post is about. Side note, Mr. Hero ranks is completely irrelevant. <laughs> like, it's about as important as, 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 as open queue. If you want to see higher ranks, go play open queue, go play mystery heroes, etc. Like, clearly you're playing roll queue for a reason, right? That is the most competitive mode, and it's not even close. So, yeah, I even if someone told me that they were, you know, Masters 3 on mystery heroes, I'd be like, I don't think that's going to explain how good you are at roll queue at all. Uh, I want to show you my average gameplay and see what other people think. I know eventually, if I'm good enough, I'll rank up with a new system, but that is very slow and tiresome, so that's that. Have I been held hostage by the ranking system everyone complained about, or do I deserve to be bronze slash silver? Any tips and feedback is appreciated. Okay, I've already done two replays tonight, and I usually stay away from posts like these, like, do I deserve X, blah, 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 the matchmaker's holding me back. I'm going to use this as a quickish micro-study in just how many things you can be doing wrong, that demonstrate why you are in the rank that you are at, okay? We're gonna only watch from the start of this game until you cap first point, which is about two minutes of gameplay. And I'm gonna try to point out as many things as I can, I wouldn't say as many, I will point out a reasonable amount of things about how suboptimally you play, right? For perspective, I play in GM, right? So my perspective is, what does GM gameplay look like? No one's expecting you to be GM. No one's expecting you to be Masters, no one's expecting you to be Diamond, no one's expecting you to be Platinum, right? You're just like, hey, look, do I deserve Silver? So we're going to be like, look, would a gold player do this even? That's kind of the, our frame of reference. So let's start watching. This will be fun. So from the start of the game, we're going out this window. Okay, fine. If you want to go out this window, it's fine. I think people will typically go out the lower window. Why? Because it gets you to the to the cart faster and the cover is better. But fine. If you want to go out this window, window that's fine. What am I doing with my time right now? I'm just sitting here watching my Widow. Now, what I think you think is going to happen here is maybe my Widow will take a duel and I'll have to heal her. Number one, if Widow was fighting another Widow or... Well, actually, Hanzo's different now, but if she's fighting another Widow, she's going to get one shot anyway. Your healing is not going to save her life at all. all right? Number two, if you thought that she was fighting another Widow and you actually wanted to save her life, you would just throw Lamp right here because then she's unkillable, right? Lamp will prevent her from dying and she's good to go. Right? That's number two. Number three, this isn't your job to begin with. Your team does not need you to pocket the Widow up here. Your team needs you to go to the cart and start moving the cart forwards. Because the objective moving forwards is how you ultimately win the game. You are not moving the objective. In fact, nobody on your team is moving the objective right now, despite the fact that you could have just walked out this doorway and gone to the objective. Your goal here is to go to the objective. Now, on your way to the objective, you will encounter the Ramatra. That's fine. You can just beat the Ramatra up. The Ramatra actually cannot kill you. There is no world here where the Ramatra can kill you. Baptiste is well known as being a support with quote unquote three health bars because you have your regular 150 health, then you have your regen burst, which heals for 80 plus 40, so that's another 120 health, and then you have a lamp, which has another 125 health and could conceivably block even more damage than that if they don't kill the lamp. So Baptiste actually has something like 500 health which is bonkers and extremely difficult for most heroes to deal with. There is no way a Ramatra is going to stand here and shoot slash punch you enough to kill you before the rest of your team kills him. So all you have to do is just walk out the front door and be like, oh, there's a Ramatra? I'll just shoot him from over here. If he tries to push me, I'll just fight him. And in the event that I'm like, oh man, I might actually die, I'll walk back into the spawn. But most likely that's not going to happen. You could single-handedly push this Ramatra back by yourself. Is that what you're doing? No, you're up here. And this is a great example of how you don't actually know how to play the game. <laughs> Again, I'm saying this enough. You don't know how to play the game. 
you think you might know the game. You, you, you think, oh, I played Mystery Heroes, I have Diamond 5 or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I played with my friends who were, you know, in, in higher ranks and I felt like I keep up. Yeah, you're not, right? Now, granted, when you're queued with friends, the other team is also going to get someone with the same general rank as you, right? So if your friends are plat and, they're, and you're playing, then maybe the game overall is plat, but the enemy team is also going to have, let's say, a Silver Baptiste to match up, or Silver Support to match up with you. Okay, so you can't even necessarily compare yourself apples to apples to the other supports. I'm just telling you, you would get absolutely blasted in a platinum level lobby. And if you don't believe me yet, like obviously we've only gone through a tiny thing. We haven't seen you do anything yet. We've seen you not do something. That's fine. Let's keep watching. Obviously, we're still wasting time. We're already up to 10 seconds here, right? Okay, finally, we've decided to go to the cart. All right, so what's my job here? My job here is to shoot the Ramatra. It's not, to heal the, it's not to heal the Junker Queen. Why? The Junker Queen has basically full health, right? She's missing, what, 25 health right now? Who cares? It's fine. The card itself will heal that. My job is to shoot the Ramatra. And what I want to be looking for right now is weaving. So weaving is when you interweave your attacks and your healing. Because of the way Baptiste mechanics work, I really don't want to get into that because I explained it like a million times. I have a video on it, right? It's, it's in like all sorts of resources. You can find it all over the internet. But the short answer is you need to shoot, shoot, heal. Alternatively, you can shoot heal, but honestly, I, I wouldn't even pay attention to this because I think it's confusing and, and I, I think for new players, just focus on this pattern. Shoot, shoot, heal. So what I'm looking for right now is, again, I look at the I look at the Ramatra. Shoot, as, I, as I'm dropping, because really there's no reason for me up here, right? Shoot, shoot, heal, drop. Shoot, shoot, heal. Shoot, shoot, heal. And notice I'm getting close to the card. Shoot, shoot, heal. Shoot, shoot, heal. Shoot. And you will just carry games that way. I guarantee you I could just get through silver with no lamp and no regen burst, just weaving attacks. Now, I'm mechanically way better than everybody else, which is going to make a big difference, but I'm just noting that it's like the the sheer value you get from constantly damaging and healing as Baptiste is bonkers. Am I, let's, are we actually weaving? No, we are only healing. Now, that's kind of, that's kind of the, the big problem of not weaving. Now, let's look at your next problem. You have... 36 out of 36 ammo right now, and you have 9 out of 13 healing. Why are you reloading? Huh? Like, do you feel like, hmm, nothing important is going around? There's a tank, point blank, with your tank right now, fighting. Why are you not out here shooting? Even if you're just healing, I, which is wrong, but even if you're just healing, at least you're doing something. Why are you reloading right now? This is completely useless. This shows to me you're like, hmm. Yeah, you know, it's fine. Like, my teammates are out there, you know, getting beat up. The Junker Queen's getting shot by the Ramatra and the Bastion and the Yari. But it's fine. Like, I can just I can just sit back here and reload. It's fine. I'm sure that will not matter in any situation where, like, my team actually needs me in any case scenario. Right? This, this is what bronze and silver gameplay looks like, where you have virtually full ammo, and instead of doing something, anything... You've chosen to take cover and reload despite being full health and no one is targeting you. And no one is near you. You're in no danger whatsoever. Okay, back to shoot, shoot, heal, right? Also, I, I should not be jumping in the air when there was a Bastion there, but fine. So shoot, shoot, heal. Just shoot, shoot, heal. Just all you do, just shoot the Ramatra. It's not your job to heal the wit Widow. The Widow is not actually in danger of dying. If she's in danger of dying, she can walk in, and can spawn and get healed. She can drop to get healed. It's not your job to heal her. Your job is to shoot the Ramatra. I cannot emphasize this enough. The reason why you are not moving forward is there is a Ramatra here. It's not because your Widow needs healing. It's not because your Junker Queen needs healing. It's because the Ramatra is standing in front of the cart, stopping it. Just shoot the Ramatra. All right. Again, 30 out of 36, 11 out of 13. Just shoot the Ramatra. Stop reloading. <coughs> It's so easy. Like, it's so easy to win games in silver. I cannot emphasize this enough. All you have to do is something, right? Just do something. Why are you doing nothing? Okay, back to it. Shoot the Ramatra, please. Why are you healing people who are full health? Right? Like, the Sombra comes in right now. She is full health. As is the Moira. Why are we shooting healing grenades here? Just shoot the Ramatra. Shoot the Bastion. Bastion's an even better target right now. But shoot anybody. Do anything. It, we've gone through now almost 30 seconds of gameplay. If you were literally not in this game, right? If you are still in spawn because you went to get water or something and you didn't come back in time, there would have been no measurable difference to how far this card had moved. 
That is how little value you have right now. Your value is functionally zero at the moment. Like if we swapped you with a bronze five Baptiste, it would look exactly the same. Nothing would change because you're not doing anything. All you need to do is shoot the enemy. Like your shots hurt. You do 75 damage with one burst, up to 150 with headshots. You hurt people. At close range, out to like, what, 20, 25 meters, it hurts getting shot by Baptiste. And it's not like you're shooting small targets that are difficult to hit. Like, you miss a Sombra, you miss a Widow, you miss a Kiriko, fine, understandable. You're not going to miss Ramatra all that much. You're not going to miss Bastion. Just shoot them. All you have to do is shoot them. All right, so we're walking forwards. Okay, so, silver. next silver mistake. I see there is a Ramatra punching my teammate. As a reminder, Ramatra's punches go pretty far. So you see that the Ramatra punch is coming all the way out here, and it penetrates multiple targets, okay? What does that mean? That means is I probably should not stand behind whoever he is targeting. Well, let's see what happens here. So I come over here. The Ramatra's punching the Moira, okay? So the punches are going to go roughly this far. So all you gotta do is stand like over here and I'm all set. And I can shoot the Ramatra and I kill the Moira and this is an easy kill. But what do you do? Well, you decide, why don't I get closer and closer and now stack on top of the Moira? So where you were perfectly safe, standing right here, anywhere from here to here, you've decided to intentionally get closer to the Ramatra to take more damage, right? And you take another punch and then he ends up dying. Now maybe, maybe you knew, oh, he's definitely gonna die here and I can just take the damage. A, this is a really bad habit, because sometimes he won't die, right? Maybe he gets nanoed, for example, and then you're suddenly screwed, right? He's obviously not gonna get nanoed here, because the, the Ana's dead and has respawned as uh, Mercy, right? But you, I guarantee you did not factor all those things in your head. It is a bad habit to take damage when you didn't need to, and you could have done your job just as well by playing two meters back and not get hit at all, and be able to heal your Moira through it to make sure she didn't die. This is just, bad play right this is what bad play looks like it's where you move to the wrong spot and you do the wrong things okay again there's no reason for me to get this close to the Ramatra. right i take the hits right the, my more is critical so i should have popped regen burst right now you're not popping regen burst you're not trying to throw a heal grenade okay i'm out here there's a bastion now shooting my junker queen at point blank i look at this and think oh wow bastion does 360 damage per second how much health does your Junker Queen have? 113 health. That means your Junker Queen is about to die. The only thing you could do right now to save her is to throw Lamp and then maybe try to throw heal after that or shoot the Bastion, okay? You need to throw Lamp right now or shoot the Bastion or both. What do you do? Nothing really. To be fair, it's fast, right? It is very, very fast. But just noting here is you do have time right there where you could have done something. Like we saw you look and you could have thrown lamp during that period of time. I think in diamond-ish, I think a Baptiste gets that safe, right? Either the kills the Bastion or or uh, saves the, the Junker Queen. You're not diamond, right? You're not plat, you're not gold, but you're just talking about gold. So I'd say that's above your skill level, but I'm just indicating like what could have been possible at this moment in time, right? Because I, I think at higher ranks, that is an easy save. Okay, back to Bastion has killed your Junker Queen. The Bastion is critically wounded. He has 65 health. You can kill this Bastion in a third of a second by yourself right now by just shooting him. One, two, three, he's dead. Right? One, two, three. It's just that easy. Just shoot the Bastion right now and he dies. Failing that, assuming I do not want to kill the Bastion for whatever reason, because I do not like winning fights and thus winning games, what should I do? Well, my Moira is vulnerable right now, and we're both low because I was a fool and I walked in front of the Ramatra and took a whole bunch of extra damage. So maybe I should heal my, Ramat my, my Moira. Now, Grenade is a good option here. Regen Burst is also a good option because it would heal both of you. Is that what you end up doing? No, I'm just staring. Uh, that's fair, no, that's unfair, that's fair. Okay, you throw, you throw Regen Burst, okay, great. Now I can shoot the, shoot the Bastion, right? I can shoot the Bastion, maybe I can even throw Lamp to the left and make sure that we kill the Bastion, All right? You grenade the Moira. But I'm going over here now. But why am I going over here? The Moira is still face-taking the Bastion right now. <clears throat> like, why don't I just go and help my Moira kill the Bastion? The Bastion's extremely low. At this point, throw Lamp, right? Step out, kill the Bastion. Is that what I do? No, I reload with 18 out of 36 ammo and 8 out of 13 healing grenades. What? There's literally a Bastion gunning your Moira down. Thankfully, the Bastion dies in time. 
But this is all representative of the extremely bad habits that you have, right? There's no sense of urgency. The ability usage is terrible. The target priority is terrible. The mechanics are bad. Yeah, I mean, if you're like, look, do I deserve higher ranks? No, because if I put you in a higher rank game, you would get obliterated. It wouldn't be fun at all. You'd be like, oh God, I'm getting completely messed up and like I die instantly and like my teammates die instantly and I have no idea what's going on. The point of being in lower ranks is so that you get time and a safer, more casual space, less competitive space, I should say, maybe not a casual, less competitive space for you to learn and get better at the game. Right? A lot of the players you're playing against are going to end up having hundreds, if not thousands of hours in the game. And that's a really, really hard like hurdle to kind of catch up to them. So I wouldn't fret so much like, oh, I got to desperately get out of silver. And I know there's like this toxic culture of people like, oh, you're whatever rank, like whatever rank is trash. You're a trash person. This is stupid. It's a video game, right? Play whatever you want. It's like if I play chess, you know, it, I don't I don't play chess competitively. But like if I started playing chess, right, would I be good? No, right? But do I attach like my my self worth as a person to like my chess rating? No, <laughs> like who cares, right? I'm just playing the game for fun. I'm gonna go out there. I go to a club. I play some chess. I lose against people who are better than me. I win against people worse than me. I get better over time. I'm not trying to be chess pro. Like it's way too late for that. There's no point for that, right? Just play the game for fun and understand that the game is good at getting you in a rank where you're going to be roughly winning 50% of your games. Because if you're winning more than 50%, then it's not the right rank, it'll increase. If you're winning fewer than 50%, then you're not good enough for your rank and you'll drop until you get to 50-50. You know? The whole goal is, look, well, A, to have fun, but B, if you want to get better, just keep practicing skills and develop good habits to get better. All right. So, we're continuing to move forward right now. I would note... So we just we just killed the Bastion. Okay, great. Excellent. So we're jumping right now. For starters, stop jumping this much. It really doesn't do as much as you think it does. A. B is like, let's look at the cart. Well, you went over here, more faded forwards, and Sombra left the cart. You're over here, and you don't seem to realize the Mora has faded forwards. Well, I mean, you realize, realize, because you can see her on your screen. But Mora is the only person on the cart, so mentally you should think, I should go to the cart right now. That's the most valuable thing we do is go to the cart right now. Like maybe the more would die out there, but so be it. Like there's not a lot I can do there, and someone needs to move the cart. If we don't move the cart, we're just gonna have to fight this whole fight all over again. That's the whole point of having a cart is to like progress the game. But you'll notice you take a really long time to realize that no one is moving the cart, right? And this is something I think even in gold they would realize right away. They'd be like, "Oh, I hear my more fade away." You're looking down at the cart and you see nobody here. Just get on the cart. What is this? Just just get on the cart. Like, let's look at how long it takes you to realize from the moment she fades. So, right now, I would know right away the more is fade. I'd look down and be like, no one on the cart. I drop on the cart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It takes you seven seconds to get back on the cart. Seven seconds on the cart means the cart's already all the way out here, for the record. That's a pretty easy thing to fix. Like, just in terms of general gameplay awareness. It shouldn't be hard to realize no one's on the cart. I'm a support. Supports are usually the one pushing the cart in an offense situation. Go on the cart. It's not that hard. Now, next problem. Remember I mentioned about jumping? Well, you jump so high, you are away from the cart. So the cart is not moving anymore. And then you go over here, and I, what you're doing right now, I think you're trying to heal your Sombra. And I like understand, but like I wouldn't bother not moving the cart for it, because it's a relatively low percentage shot anyway, and they're not expecting to get healed by you, right? There's no way your Sombra and where or whatever are all the way out here, and they think, man, I'm really like factoring in the fact that I'm going to get healing from Baptiste to change this fight. If they get it, great. If they don't get it, then they'll have their own, own retreat options, right? They have Fade, they have Translocate, etc. Your job is not to heal them 50, 60 meters away from you. Your job is to just move the cart. And I know that seems silly and not so fun, but it's the way you win the game. You need to move the cart. If you do not move the cart, you're gonna lose the game no matter what else that happens. Just move the cart, right? You guys already did the hard part, which is killing the opposing enemy team. Just move the cart. Stop jumping away from it and having it stop moving, right, constantly. Again, notice the cart is not moving. <laughs> It's so easy, it's so easy, right? Just stand, literally just stand on the cart in the situation and that way you have a higher vantage point to be able to shoot the heals. <coughs> All right, so Moira dies right now. That's obviously not so good. So we're just chilling right now. Again, there's no need for me to jump anymore. I'm reloading despite the fact that I have how much ammo right now? 
I have 27 ammo and 13 heal grenades. I have three eligible targets in front of me. I have an injured Junker Queen. I pop one heal. Okay, Junker Queen's no longer injured. I have 12 out of 13, 27 ammo, three valid targets. Do I shoot? I reload. Stop reloading. Oh, wow. Stop reloading. <laughs> it's just, it's so easy. It's so easy to just... Just stop reloading, because you could do damage, right? You do more damage, possibly get a kill along with Widowmaker, or along with your Junker Queen, or maybe you just farm ult charge and you pop window really early. There are many, there's many way, good things that come from dealing damage. There are not many good things that come from not dealing damage. Just shoot them. It's really that easy. Alright, we're shooting them. As a record, for the record, do not stand still pretty much ever in Overwatch. Anytime you're visible to the enemy, do not stand still. It is a terrible habit. This is what low-ranked players look like. When they stand still and they're like, I bet the enemy won't shoot me in the face, they'll shoot you in the face. This Iliari, not so good. She shoots you in the chest, but she could have shot you in the head. And at higher ranks, you'll get obliterated. Like literally, the survival time between standing still and moving just a little bit easily triples the amount of time it, you'll stay alive. I, I, I feel like people do, will, do no, don't believe me until they get into higher ranks and they realize just how fast you will die. And it's so easy to do. I'm not even saying that you need great movement. Just literally be even moving in a straight line is better than standing still. Okay, stop jumping. There's no need. Just fire one grenade at her. Go back to shooting. This Bastion is caught out in the open, right? What, what is this Bastion doing? He's like so far out in the open, right? If I'm here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shots I fired against the, 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 the Bastion, right? Eight times 75 is what 600 damage like it's it's just bonkers like i could have killed the baptiste twice over <laughs> just me just me literally just me forget the junk queen forget the widow just me i could have just killed the the bastion is is just throwing look he's so far away from cover he just strolls out in the open it's like wait, what is this he should be dead but he's not dead because you're just not shooting him it's I, I'm a broken record. It's so easy to win because the enemy team has no idea what they're doing. Neither does your team, and neither do you. And that's what the VOD review is for, what this review is for. I'm just trying to highlight, like, we've gone through a minute and 15 seconds of gameplay. It's so easy to carry these games. <laughs> just kill the Bastion first. The Bastion's been critically wounded the whole time. Forget the Ramatra. You're not going to die. There's no way... <coughs> I know you see the Ramatra here, and you think, oh, the Ramatra's scary. I gotta run away. You're fine. You're totally fine right now. The, a, the Ramatra's not even looking at you. B, even if he is, I still have Regen Burst, and I still have Lamp. Right? I can kill the Bastion right now, and then I can start fighting the Ramatra. I would even try to escape. I don't look at this as, oh, this Ramatra's gonna push me back. I look at this as, A, I kill the Bastion. B, I shoot the Ramatra. Ramatra tries to kill me. I pop Regen Burst. Okay, he gets me low. I throw Lamp behind him, right? Such that he is here. He is here, and the lamp, the lamp is here, and the lamp's field is like that, right? It's not, obviously, it's not like, like that, right? And then he has to turn, and then he has to punch the lamp twice and do a quick melee, which I think is extremely unlikely he's going to know to do with this rank. So he has to punch it three times, which gives me so much time that even if my team did not help me, and I personally didn't do enough damage to heal him, then I could jump away. Like, your survival time against this Ramatra, even if he was literally a GM Ramatra, is well over six seconds. It is impossible for him to kill you quickly here. But you don't know that, and as a result, you lose out on this opportunity to kill the Bastion! <laughs> or the Ramatra. Like, you could just straight up kill the Ramatra right now. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, aim here is okay at best. So... Now we go back to weaving. This is an easy save. I drop down, I go shoot, shoot, heal, shoot, shoot, heal. Okay, she's getting low, I throw lamp for her, right? Shoot, shoot, heal, shoot, shoot, heal. Okay, lamp destroyed, I pop regen burst. And then the Ramatra's dead and the Junker Queen lives. Right, this lamp is too early, right? Again, I'm not shooting the, like one, honestly, it, to some extent, it's faster to save the Ramatra by kill, kill, save the Junker Queen by killing the Ramatra than it is trying to heal your Junker Queen. Baptiste actually doesn't heal that much in the grand scheme of things. Like, his single target healing is not great, but your damage is phenomenal. And then you just wander over here and then you die because you're not killing the Ramatra and you're not doing a good job of using your abilities and you're not doing a good job of dodging and thus you're dead. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is what low silver looks like to me. Okay, so we're pushing forwards. Uh, once again, you're missing opportunities to kill people. 
Again, n notice like how low the Mercy gets pulled forward by knife. Just shoot her right now. Just shoot the Mercy. She's got 50 health. Just shoot the Mercy. Stop healing the Drinker Queen. He's almost full. Oh boy. All right, we are stuck in the open, away from cover completely. We drop the Bastion, for example. We heard the assault form get changed. Okay, this is not a surprise. He's shooting the whole time. Despite that, we drop into the middle of the road. This Bastion 100% kills you, except for the fact that he's going to lose his transformation the instant before he kills you. He drops you all the way down to 25 health, and he and it and it expires. That's the only reason you live right now. I would also note that while you're getting gunned down, you don't use regen burst and you don't use lamp. It is very hard for you to do less than what you're doing right now. Okay? I know that's going to hurt, but at some level, I think I need to say that because I feel like that's going to help like kick in, like sink in just how little you're doing right now. Again, you were in an okay position on high ground. You could have killed the Mercy, but fine, whatever, right? You intentionally dropped into the open against the highest damage hero in the game who is behind a shield. And then while you're getting obliterated by him, you chose not to use either one of the defensive abilities that would have kept you alive and instead relied on him A, missing, and B, his transformation ending just in time. And there is no way that you knew that his transformation was gonna end and that he was gonna miss that much just in time for you to live, right? The second I, I get here, I'm like, oh shoot, I've screwed up. And at this moment in time, I now toss Lamp into this doorway, and then I step over here and I take and I fight the fight the the bastard. Because what's he gonna do? He can't kill the Lamp, right? If I throw him in this room, and I can fight it out. Or at this point, I pop regen burst because I'm now at 50% health. I can hear the gasp, right, and see the redness on my screen, and I know I'm critical. And now I pop regen burst to keep myself alive. You don't do anything. Like, none of the things. Now, this takes muscle memory and experience and gameplay hours on Overwatch and Baptiste specifically. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm not saying this is that easy in the grand scheme of things. But if you're like, look, you want to get the gold or whatever, like, this is basic stuff that you need to be, need to do. One of the things I say is, once you hit about Platinum-ish, heroes never die with defensive cooldowns on. Ever. Right? But you would have died and deserved to die right there, for the record. All right. So... You're all just like they pop like all the ulties in the world and kill you. That's fine, right? They pop four ulties, fine, whatever. It's not, not a big deal, right? I don't think there's really anything you could have done differently there. Fortunately, you got your team ends up capping anyway because I think the somber pack caps them because they are, you know, silver level players. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're going to hold there. So, question number one Do you deserve silver? Yeah. Oh, I cannot imagine that you, you watch this replay and you're like, oh yeah, I'm way better than the other people in this game. You look just as bad as everybody else, right? There's no way you look at a gameplay and be like, you're clearly dominating everybody else in this game. That's number one. Number two, sometimes people say this, please don't say, oh, the beginning was rough or whatever, just watch another part of the game. It always looks the same, right? Relative to me, yeah, maybe you played a little better at other sections of the game, it all looks the same to me, right? It's, <laughs> don't, don't, delude yourself and thinking it's going to be any different. Your bad habits are exactly the same the whole time. Uh, next up, Mystery Heroes. Is it relevant? No, it's not relevant. Mystery Heroes rank is completely garbage compared to uh, Roll Q. Um, ranking up is slow and tiresome. Well, it should be if you're not better than, your, than everyone else, right? If you're better than your peers, it goes very quickly, in fact, right? But you're not better than your peers. And I say this is that if if you were truly better than everybody else in the game, you would win like 80%. Like if, I, if you plop me in, in your games, I would win like 95% of your games. And I guarantee you that's going to include a bunch of games that you think are unwinnable, where you're like, my team was terrible. The other team was so good. How could we possibly win? I would go in the game and be like, yeah, that's no problem. I just kill everybody. That's <laughs> not an issue. Like I'm doing a, basically any hero that's not Life Weaver or Mercy, I could just dominate the game because it's not that hard. Because I see the mistakes that enemies make, and I have better mechanics, and I have better reaction times, and I have better game sense, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like every single dimension, I'd be way better. The goal is how do you become that better hero that carries, carries those games so that you rank up faster? But again, ranking up is a highly questionable goal, you know? Like, yeah, okay, you rank the gold. What's going to happen? Every gold game you play will be the hardest game you've ever played in your life. Because every single gold player got there by dominating silver players. Which means every player you face at your peak skill level is going to be, on average, better than all of the other players that you have ever played against. 
I think that's really important to note, right? When people want to rank up, it only makes the game harder. Like, a lot harder. <laughs> like, your, your margin for error is going to be even smaller. That's one of the reasons why I don't actually play that many games these days, is because it's stressful for me, right? Like, can I still win? I can, but I have to try. Like, I'm putting in, like, 95, 100% energy in order to focus, in order to try to win my games at GM, because I need to in order to win. If I don't, I lose, and losing is not so fun, right? If I play to the lower rank, <laughs> like, even Masters, I can play fairly casually. Like, I can win most of my games in Masters playing with even, like, 80% focus. I can, like, put some music on. I could, like, even have a conversation with somebody else, like, on Discord. And I'd still win the games because it's not that hard. But then the game ranks me out of there, and I go back to GM and so forth, and there we go. So don't think of ranking up as simply like, oh, like, that's the game. Like, yes, it's cool. It's great. I mean, Overwatch is a fun game. It's a deep game. There's a lot of incredible, like, experiences you can have and satisfaction in ranking up. But it's not going to magically make anything better. And in some ways, it's going to make the game experience worse because the game will be significantly harder to play in and then you have to hold yourself more accountable for your mistakes. And don't think your teammates are going to be any better either, right? Like, you'll get to a level where you feel better than you were before, but then you'll start seeing mistakes at your new teammates, and they'll see mistakes in you, and you'll still get flamed, right? It'll still happen. Okay. Baptiste specifically, right? What do we talk about? Well, A, dealing damage, right? If I don't have anything else to do, or frankly, even if I do, damage people. Damage people all the time. I can weave basically for free, for free. Shoot, shoot, heal, shoot, shoot, heal, shoot, shoot. Just constantly keep doing it all the time, right? Whether or not people need healing or not, just, shoot, shoot, just keep doing it because it's a great way to build the muscle memory. That's number one. Number two, focus on what you actually need to be doing. Often, it's moving the cart or pressuring the front line or keeping your tank alive. Don't waste your time trying to like heal your widow in the back line while she gets a pick or whatever. That's not your job, right? You're not like a mercy or something like that. Your job is to be a front line support, not literally front line, not the very front line, but relatively close to the front line. 10 meters behind your tank, right? A frontline support helping your tank push through whatever's going on and obliterating, frankly, whatever's in front of you, okay? Also, it means things like moving the cart. Number three, ability usage. Regen burst, lamp, two of the strongest abilities in the game, two of the longest cooldown abilities in the game. You don't really use them very much. It's important to do, okay? So I think those things alone will be enough to significantly elevate your gameplay. So focus on that. Again, I have a video guide on Baptiste and Kiriko weaving. It's very short, very quick, right? Watch that if you still understand what I mean by weaving, right? Watch that, very, very easy. Besides that, I have a ton of reviews on Baptiste in general. Worth it for you to, to, to watch some of those as well, especially for your rank. You can also look at gameplay of me playing Baptiste, right? I think I have Baptiste games in Masters that you can watch if you're like, look, what does it look like? There are plenty of other videos out there of other top level players. Um, I think I even have a I think I have a top 500 Baptiste game uh, review too. Um, oh no, it's Kyrie, it's Kyrie. Go. I think I might have a GM Baptiste review somewhere, but you can watch other players, you can look it up online, right? You can find Baptiste guides online, lots of resources out there. But definitely don't look at this as, or don't, don't come from the perspective of like, oh, I'm so good at Baptiste, I just heard higher rank. I don't think you even know what a better Baptiste looks like. And until you know what that looks like, you can't realize how big a difference there is between you and a higher rank Baptiste. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Hopefully it's helpful.